Hello beautiful internet family, Dan here from danstube.tv and it's finally that time. I've had so many comments about this since my Android content on Lychee and people wanted to know when is the iOS version coming out for Mini 2, Mini SE and Air 2S users and the answer is it's available right now. So if you already own Lychee and you have one of those three drones I just mentioned, you can now use Lychee with those three drones um, as well as the other compatible drones that are already ready to be used. But the Mini 2, the Mini SE and the Air 2S are all ready to be used now for iOS users. I have already posted a few Android videos showcasing how the Mini 2 and the Mini SE perform through Lychee on Android devices and it was a flawless experience. I really enjoyed it. Some of the feedback I got was that people wanted to see more movement for the following modes. They didn't just want me to be walking around. So for this video with the Mini 2, I've got me on a bike trying to really push the limits of the tracking or the following mode here to really see how well it can perform. And then with the Mini SE, I've got the drone actually tracking a car, tracking my car as I'm driving down this really awesome, like empty road. So hopefully that's some more movement that can show you how powerful Lychee is with the follow mode. Um, and in this video, like I said, this is specifically for iOS users who are interested in getting Lychee for their Mini 2. One thing I find really interesting is that the tracking mode is promoted more so than the following mode, but I'm actually really impressed by the following mode. The reason it's so impressive and so flawless is that it's actually using the mobile device's GPS and altitude sensors. So instead of using an algorithm, instead of the actual camera picking up on a subject, you drawing around the box on that subject, and then the drone actually you know, trying to keep an eye on that box basically. Now that becomes really confusing when the environments change, it becomes confusing when it goes behind a tree and then your drone just stops following you. So for me the tracking modes just aren't that reliable and I don't really enjoy using them. But the following mode on the other hand is just unbelievably reliable and consistent. As long as you've got a signal, as long as you've actually got that connection point and the mobile device GPS is working, uh, you have no issues and it can track you you know, through trees and through anything that's in the way. You can have zero line of sight as such, like no visibility um, of the subject that it's actually tracking, which is your phone basically. But amazingly enough, it just keeps tracking you through all of the trees and obstacles that are in your way. I do still get a little bit nervous when I'm using a third party application like Lychee with one of my drones. Purely because it is a third party application at the end of the day, you just don't know what to expect. So make sure if you are to use this, make sure you're being safe, make sure you've tested it before and you know how to pause the operation, make sure you know how to take control of your drone and pause the actual following mode so it doesn't continue to follow you after you're, let's say it's flying too close to something and you decide, okay, I'm just gonna stop recording, but it's gonna continue following you. So you need to make sure you know where that stop button is uh, for the following mode. And I think once you've got an idea of how to use your drone uh, with the Lightshee application, it then just becomes so much fun. I was really excited to test this out while I was riding my bike today because I haven't really had a chance to test the following mode with something that's moving a lot faster. Previously, I might jog or I might just walk around a field, test it with some trees, but to actually test it when I'm on a bike going relatively fast, turning corners, turning around, changing the direction that the drone is tracking me, whether that's from the front, the left, the right, or from the rear. It was a really cool test to see how well the Mini 2 could perform the following functionality. Before I get deeper into the following functionality that Lychee offer to Mini 2 users, I do want to give a massive shout out to our sponsor today, which is the Fearless Drone Academy. It's the ultimate online drone course for beginners. So if you or someone you know is a beginner, just got a drone, or you're terrified to fly it after maybe a recent crash, or you just have no idea how to actually fly the drone because they never teach you how to fly the drone, you just buy the drone and then you don't really know what to do, which is always a terrible position to be in for anyone out there. So that's why I decided to make a course that literally has everything you need, insights and guidance from a drone expert. It's got so much content and honestly, by the end of it, you will feel fearless and ready to take on any flight. So if you do wanna sign up to the Fearless Drone Academy, or if you know someone that is a beginner who might enjoy this, then go to fearlessdrone.academy, use the code DANSTUBE upon checkout and you'll save 10% off the course.
Moving back to the following functionality through the Lychee application, I found that the Mini 2 did a great job of following the controller or following the mobile device GPS. It really did a great job. I, I never had any issues with it dropping out or anything like that, which I wasn't expecting to anyway, but it just did a great job with everything I chucked at it. One thing I did notice that was different to the Android version though, is on the Android version, you actually have like a compass design. So when you're choosing the heading, which is basically the direction that the drone will be following you from, you actually have basically a circle, like a compass design that shows you which direction the drone's gonna be following you from. It's a lot more visual, it's a lot more, like it's easier to actually read that information at a glance. But for whatever reason on the iOS version, you just have a slider. So you just slide between basically the different tracking points. So whether you want to be following from the rear, whether you wanna be following from the front, the left or the right, or a different angle from that. The thing that's just a little confusing is the language they've used. So they refer to it as leash or lead. Now, I just like the compass design on Android because it's so much clearer and easier to see at a glance. I hope this is something that they add to iOS. I don't really understand why it's not there. I had a look through the settings and I couldn't enable it anywhere, but that's a minor, minor issue because once I actually figured out what it all meant and what leash was and what lead was and you know how to actually make sense of what I'm actually setting up with the drone, it did a fantastic job. It kept the height perfectly. I was really impressed with how accurate the following mode was and how on point it was with everything that I actually put into the settings. So in terms of the height, that's something that's so important to me because I've set the height above the trees, above buildings, above anything that it might crash into. And that's something that always worries me, that it's not actually going to be able to keep that point or it may, let's say, assess that I'm going down a hill, even though I'm not. And I always worry that it's maybe gonna have a bit of an issue with the height. But honestly, I had an, like my eye on that because I was curious to see how it went. And it went within like 0.1 of a meter. Like it was so accurate that I found it never never had issues. Like it may have dropped down by 0.2 of a meter at times, 0.3, but for the most part, it was pretty much bang on every single time. And it did a great job of keeping the distance as well, even though I was on a bike going like relatively fast, you know, like not crazy fast, but I was still impressed that it was able to keep that accuracy throughout all the maneuvers I put it through. Now, one thing you'll notice as I'm adjusting the heading, the drone basically swings around to the location that you've set. So if you want it to be at the lead, then it'll be right at the front of you as the pilot, as the controller, and it will start following you from the front. Now, I was pretty impressed with how this worked. I did notice it occasionally swayed a little bit, which is kind of expected in the early stages. You know, there will be some more improvements and updates to the iOS version of Lychee, but I did find it was great with every other maneuver. You know, when it was on the left, the right, or from the rear, it did a really great job. I found that it was pretty much flawless all the time. The only time it had some issues or it got a little bit confused, which I thought was actually a really good test, was as I would turn the corner, so I'd turn left around a corner, and then I'd turn right around another corner, the drone would still try to figure out which way the controller or the mobile phone was facing. So you'd find that it would kind of have some stuttery movements, and then it might swing around to reassess the situation. So if I had it set at the lead point, and then it got confused because I turned to the left, it might then try to move around me again. And then once it settled out again, it would just swing back. And the footage didn't look great for those transitions, um, but it was still impressive that it got to the point that it, you know, that I actually set it to. I just took a little bit longer because it got a little confused, but yeah, no major issues. It still did exactly what I wanted it to do. The other thing I love about the settings is that you can literally just use the slider to change the height and the distance. So that can actually create a very unique revealing shot. It can kind of create a smooth movement as well as following you. So it does create a whole new like element of movement for the drone, which I really like because you wouldn't be able to get these kind of movements with the DJI Fly app. You definitely wouldn't be able to move, you know, in multiple directions. So you can't move up and further away from you while you're adjusting the heading and the way that it's following you because there's no following mode for Mini 2 through the DJI app. So that's so cool that you can have all of this functionality and it does work relatively flawlessly. Like unless you're turning lots of corners and it gets confused, it really does a fantastic job in all the scenarios I put it in. I was also really impressed when I had the drone off to the left or to the right of me. It actually did a great job of keeping me in the center of the frame. I thought that's where it was actually going to struggle a fair bit because obviously I'm moving at a particular pace, whatever that may be. And then the drone's trying to keep me in the middle while flying 
you know, on an angle sideways and keeping focused on the actual controller, keeping that speed, that height, everything. You know, this is quite a complex experience if you imagine how they've programmed this. It's got to keep all of those like data points on point, really. You know, it's got to keep the distance right, the height right. It's also got to continue to follow you and keep you in the middle of the frame. And it really does an amazing job. I was quite impressed with how it did those side-on profile shots. I actually preferred those um, when I was doing this test there because they do give a unique perspective. But then it's also really cool to have those leading shots because it's very hard if you would imagine to be, you know, riding a bike and also trying to get those shots of the drone following you or in front of you flying backwards. I mean, you can try it, but it's probably not gonna do an amazing job. So the fact that you can get these unique shots and just one person, it's literally just me out there tapping on buttons, having fun, and I can get some really unique shots um, from the Lychee application. So if you haven't heard of Lychee, or if you have heard of Lychee and you're really keen to get it on your iOS device, I will have those links below to check it out on iOS and Android. Some of the other features that are available are waypoint mode, you get panorama mode, track mode, follow mode, VR mode, as well as focus mode. So there's a bunch of other features within those modes as well but I just wanted to mention that it is a comprehensive application. Even though it's a paid application, you're getting features in here that you would not be able to get with your Mini 2 or your Mini SE. In this video, I was using my iPhone XS Max. I just thought I'd let you guys know that. I've had a few people ask me what device I'm using, but all of the compatibility of the devices and the drones will be available through Lychee's website, as well as on the App Store and Play Store. But I'm using the XS Max, which isn't a new new phone you know it's been out for years now and it still performs perfectly well the gps works great the altitude sensors everything works great with those following modes um, so just keep an eye on that check it out check the compatibility to make sure that your device will work and then it will hopefully function properly in the way that you expect it to before you actually pay for this application but that is the end of this video i'm very impressed like i said with the following mode Overall, I was really impressed with how Lychee handled the iOS SDK as well as the Mini 2 and the Mini SE, which I'll mention in my Mini SE video, so there'll be all my separate thoughts over there. But the Mini 2 did a fantastic job. It did everything that I wanted and expected it to do. And again, like I said, very impressive that this is able to happen. You know, like this is impressive programming and an impressive flight controller that gives you so many new options that really bring life to a drone like the Mini 2 that you know you might have got over. You might be bored of the Mini 2 right now um, and it's just sitting collecting dust, but an application like this opens up all of these new options and it creates a whole new experience for you. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate all of your support. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I'll chat to you in the next one. Peace.